everyone and welcome to the tips and tricks video for the Sassanach knit along. My name is Garmin and I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs and I am super excited to be doing this knit along together with you. During the Sassanach Cal we will be knitting a set of two cushions, one of which you see behind me right here. The knit along will last for 10 weeks and starts on February 23rd and the kits are available in three different colorways. This is from the colorway Rosa which is the second colorway and in this video you'll find everything you need to know before tackling this project. During this knit along I will also be posting other videos here on my channel so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of those videos. In this tips and tricks video we are going to be making a practice project to practice your color work and this will also be our gauge swatch which is very important to make this. And for this gauge swatch, you will need colors B and F from your kit. This, these are the colors from the Erika uh, colorway kit, but B and F will work uh, for any of the colorways. If you are a member of Team Free Spirit, then just take the two colors that you have the most of, of Scapey's Metropolis, or two colors that you don't plan to use, because those are great to have in your gauge swatch. And if you think that you're not going to have enough for both the project and the gauge swatch, then um, you can unravel this later on because we won't be cutting the yarn up into smaller pieces. So in this video, I will be showing you how to cast on with Judy's Magic Cast On and we will be casting on onto two circular needles. See, I have four needle tips. So two circular needles. My favorites are Chowgu and um, I got gauge with three millimeter needles. This will be the case for most of you, although if you don't get gauge you can always change your needle size. Uh, and the length that I'm using is 80 centimeters. All of this information is also in the tips and tricks document, so make sure you have that as well. So after the cast on, we will be knitting some rounds plain. Then we will start with some simple color work and gradually getting more difficult and just incorporating other techniques into it such as wrapping floats and understanding different ways of looking at your chart and seeing if there is an easily memorable repeat in there. I'll have some more tips and tricks for you along the way and we'll also be casting off together. So grab your yarn and your needles and let's cast on. So here's the swatch that I knit in preparation for the knit along and we will be casting on with Judy's Magic Cast On right here. We'll be casting on stitches for both the front and the back and then we'll be knitting in the round until our work measures around 12 centimeters uh, so we can easily measure 10 centimeters. Um, in length and also in width. We'll be casting on 40 stitches for each side. Um, so let's move on to the cast on. We'll be using colors B and F from your kit uh, because these will be the colors that will have the most left over so we can use that for our swatch. You can use any of the two to cast on. I'm going to use um, B. So you will need the yarn and two circular knitting needles in three millimeter or in the size that you think will give you gauge but i suggest trying three millimeter first and i'm using a 80 centimeter length circular needle you can also use just one circular needle and for that I advise a length of 150 centimeters. So we will take two needle tips. If you have just one needle then take both tips of that one needle and we will take the yarn. So I'm using color B, you can use color F. We're going to use more or less the same amount of both colors. Um, and we are going to be casting on 40 stitches on each side. And you will need about 80 centimeters uh, for your yarn tail here. 
Now, this is arguably the trickiest part of the entire project, so please bear with me, it will get easier from here on. Uh, if you've knit socks before, uh, or if you've knit my Cozy Moment shawl before, you will know this uh, technique. So, yarn to the ball is on the top here. Yarn end is in my front here. Um, I will loop the yarn, or like, lay the yarn over the needle that is furthest away from me. I will be calling this the back needle, and I will be calling this the front needle. Okay. Now, you have a loop just laying, laying loosely on your needle, and I'm going to take the ball yarn and cross it with the uh, yarn tail. So I'm just going to take it towards me and I'm going to move the yarn tail to the back. So the uh, yarns have now switched positions, which means uh, that I've crossed them underneath the needle. And this is our first stitch. And let me just show you how I'm holding it. I am using my thumb and index finger and putting it between the two yarns, kind of separating them like this. Then I'm taking my pinky and ring finger to hold the yarns. So I'm using my thumb and index finger to spread the yarns and my ring finger and pinky to hold the yarns. Now we're going to be making stitches onto the front needle and onto the back needle alternating. We're going to be making a stitch on the front needle first now because we already have a stitch here on the back needle. And the front needle always takes the back yarn. And with the back yarn, we're going we're underneath the needle, we're coming up between the needles and forward. Now the back stitch, the back needle needs a stitch and we're going to do that with the front yarn. So the front yarn comes up through the middle and to the back. So it's kind of like a figure eight motion with the back yarn we're going through um, through the middle of these two needles and to the front and with the front yarn we're going through the middle and to the back so up between the needles to the front up between the needles to the back up between the needles to the front up between the needles to the back And if you get distracted, just uh, take a look at the stitches on your needle. So here we have four stitches on the front needle and five stitches on the back needle. And that means that we need to put one more on the front needle. Um, if, it's, if both numbers are even, then we need to start on the back needle again. And always remember that the needle gets a stitch from the opposing um, yarn thread. So for the front needle, we're going with the back yarn. For the back needle, we're using the front yarn. And I'm just carefully going to flip this over so you can see the bottom. You don't have to do this. And you can see that the yarn is getting twisted underneath my knitting needles and that's what keeps this these stitches into place so that's what we want okay so i'm going to continue uh, until we have 40 stitches on each side so now we have six stitches on each side we want 40 so it's just in the middle and to the back in the middle to the front in the middle to the back in the middle to the front it's just once you get the hang of it 
there is a very nice rhythm to it. And once you get to the tips of your needles, just take your thumb of your right hand and scoot the stitches further up on the needle tip. And now I've kind of forgotten um, which needle needs a stitch, so let's just count 13. And this one has 12, so this one needs another stitch. And now we continue. For your cushion cover, you will need to uh, cast on a lot more stitches. And for that, um, to make it easier to count, you can put stitch markers between the stitches. And I like using these kind of light bulb shaped pins. You can open them like this, and then we can count to 10 and put a stitch marker right there. And you only have to put a stitch marker on one of the needles because it's going to be the same on the other side. Um, or you can use these kind of um, stitch markers. These are plastic and um, they you don't have to click to open them. They just slide into your work. So it's a little bit trickier to get those between the needles. So I might just move my work onto my cables. And put the stitch marker on there. So then you kind of know, like I often lose count and this way I don't have to count back all of the stitches. So just continue until you have 40 stitches on each of your needles. All right, once you have your 40 stitches on each side, so 80 stitches in total, um, we are going to be knitting the first round. And just note that your last stitch is made on the front needle here. And it is just this yarn tail. And it is very easy to lose that stitch. So just hold your stitch behind your work Hold it so that the yarn tail, even if it moves, that stitch does not go anywhere. And I'm just going to transfer it to my left hand. I'm going to rotate my work so that the needle tips are facing to the right. So I'm going, I'm going to make sure that I know where my ball yarn is so that I'm uh, knitting with the correct yarn. And we are going to be knitting stitches from this needle. That is the needle where the last stitch is very loose. That needle. And um, we are going to slide this needle tip. We're going to slide it to the right so that these stitches are resting on the cable. Now, if you are using one long circular needle, you will then take this needle tip that we just pulled out of the work and bring it to the other needle tip, you know, tips together. If you are using two circular needles like me, you take this cable, so this is the needle tip, and we follow that, we take this cable, and just follow that until we get that needle tip. Because we are going to be knitting on this same needle so that these stitches all stay here nice on this cape. Okay. You don't have to know why just yet. Just um, follow me. Okay. I am holding my uh, index finger behind my work and I am uh, holding it so that this yarn tail 
doesn't just um, disappear and make us lose our stitch. And I am going to be knitting into this first stitch. And I'm going to be knitting into the front loop. So I'm inserting my needle. I'm taking the ball yarn. Make sure that it is the yarn going to your yarn ball. Loop it around and pull it through. And keep your index finger on the back so that you're securing that yarn tail. Now for the rest of the stitches on this needle, you will see that the right leg is coming off the back of the needle. Usually we knit through the front leg, but these stitches are twisted on the needle, so we need to knit through the back leg. And to do that, you just go into the back of your stitch from right to left, like this. Loop it around and pull it through. So just insert through the back leg, right to left, and knit. And I actually think this knits easier than having to maneuver your needle and catch that. So for the beginning, where we only have very limited uh, motion here, this is actually easier. And it allows us to untwist those stitches. So I'm just going to knit all of these stitches on this needle. Right. And now I'm going to take this needle tip and move it so that these stitches are on the cable. We just knit the first half of the first round. We're gonna turn our work, rotate our work, so that the working yarn tail, so the yarn going to the yarn ball is on the right hand side. And the needle where the yarn tail is not, we are going to be knitting on that side. So we're going to be knitting on the side that does not have the yarn tail. So I'm going to be moving that, that needle so that the needle tip is in the stitches here. This is the back of our work, so I'm going to turn it to the right side of our work where you see the nice knit stitches. Okay, we don't have to be holding the stitch, um, the, the work as, um, you know, as firmly because there is no loose stitch. So we are just taking this needle, following that cable and taking the other yarn tail. I've taken the other um, needle tip. If you're working with just one circular needle, it will be obvious. Um, I just take the other needle tip. Um, on this side, the stitches are just normal. They are, they are not twisted, so we can just insert and start knitting. And for the very, very first um, one, one or maybe two stitches, I'm just moving the cable so that it meets this needle tip. Because otherwise, if this is like really far apart, then it's gonna create a ladder there. And you're not gonna like that. So usually I take my right index finger and just hold it towards the, cable, the needle tip so that the distance between the two needles um, is short. So I'm just going to knit all of the stitches here and then we will have completed the first round. 
and you can actually use this time to practice your continental knitting skills and continental knitting is when you hold it in your left hand um, if you crochet just hold your yarn as you would if you crochet um, I am going to catch it with my pinky finger like this and I'm gonna flip my hand over and then just slide my index finger underneath it and I'm going to open up that first and uh, the next stitch open it up and you see the yarn tail uh, the yarn is just hanging there I'm going to go behind it with my right hand needle and and just pull it up through the loop so I'm opening up the stitch taking that yarn and bringing it through the loop opening it opening up the stitch i'm going behind the yarn uh, top to bottom so not bottom to top top to bottom and pulling it through the stitch and this is going to be really handy if you already know this because that is going to make your color work knitting much, much easier. And you only have the knit stitch here, so you can just practice. And I find it really easy to just practice this on the knit stitch. So we have now completed one round and I know that because the yarn tail is here. Um, if you want another reminder of where the beginning of the round is, just use one of your markers again and just Put it in the fabric on this side then you know okay this is the beginning of the round so now we are going to knit two more rounds um, before we start the color work um, just so we have a nice solid base you're always going to be knitting the needle that does not have the yarn ball. So here the yarn ball is attached to this needle so we are going to be knitting on this needle. So for that needle you bring the needle tip into um, the stitches and take the other needle tip of that needle and then start knitting. So if you put your work down and you don't quite know what to do, that is how you can tell. And as we go on, it will be more and more obvious uh, because you can see the pattern emerging and you'll know like, oh, I've just done that uh, needle, so I need to work on this needle now. But uh, for the beginning, while it's still kind of a flat piece, um, when it's not really uh, formed a pocket yet, uh, it can be uh, difficult to tell. So that's why I'm giving you these kind of tips. So knit another two rounds um, and then I'll meet you back for some color work. So I've completed two more rounds and you can see that you can fold it over now so you have the nice cast on edge right here and our marker is here so we're at the beginning of the round uh, and we are going to be doing some color work in this round so I am going to take my other color so this is my color F um, and just like um, we are going to do for the actual pattern for the cushion cover, the two stitches on each side are going to be um, in the background color. 
and two stitches on each side that means one stitch here one stitch here one stitch here and one stitch here so i am just going to be knitting the first stitch with this color and now uh, i want to be adding the new color and usually i just put my needle into the next stitch already so um so this needle isn't loose and just flopping around it's kind of secure in that stitch and that leaves my right hand free to grab this yarn and to grab a tail and i usually leave about 15 centimeters and um if you prefer you can make a loop in your hand and put that around the stitch um, i usually take the yarn tail and hold it with my uh, left hand behind the work and then just loop it around the needle so i'm holding this with my left hand and then i am pulling the needle through and we're going to do one more stitch with this color now the next color the next stitch is going to be with my purple color again so i'm going to be inserting into that stitch i'm dropping this yarn i'm taking where is it <laughs> taking the other yarn and completing my stitch with that this is the most, the, the easiest way of knitting with two colors, but I'm going to show you more options. So we're going to knit two colors, uh, two stitches with each color and then alternate. I am inserting into this, into the next stitch, taking the green again, looping it around, knitting a second stitch taking the purple again this is the very easiest way of doing color work but if you have a large project to do this can be kind of slow because the dropping and picking up of your yarn it adds a little to your knitting time. So I'm going to show you what I usually do. I take one color in my left hand uh, with continental style knitting. So that means I wrap it around my pinky finger. So I go behind it and kind of hook my pinky finger into it. And then stretch it out again and then turn my my hand flat and go um, under it with my index finger and I'm holding it like this and the color on my right I'm using I'm uh, holding it in my right hand I'm just going to move the uh, yarn tails out of the way now the next stitch I just did two purple so I need two greens And now for the continental stitches, I'm opening up the stitch, going behind that color and taking it forward. And as you move from one color to the next, I always just kind of stretch my stitches on the needle before I reach over with the second color. And complete that stitch and because I stretch out these stitches like don't overdo it but uh, because I stretch out these stitches my floats which are the th threads here of unused yarn you see it's a little bit longer from this color than from this color these are the floats and because I stretch my work these floats are relaxed because you don't want 
uh, to tug on your yarn and make those floats really tight because then your fabric is going to pucker. Um, and even if your work doesn't look completely smooth, um, most of it can be resolved in blocking. But you want to stretch your stitches every once in a while to make sure that your floats are not tight, but nice and relaxed. And for this pattern, because it's just two stitches of one color, we don't have to worry about wrapping floats yet. I know some of you might be thinking about that, um, but we'll, we'll come to that in a later chart in this gauge swatch. So I'm ending with two green stitches and then one purple stitch, not because purple is what comes next, but because the last stitch of each side, uh, we're going to be doing that with a background color. And that will be in your chart as well. So, and now we turn around. I'm going to take this needle so that the stitches are on the cable. And see, now it's obvious which side we need to work on. So now it's... Uh, it's not as tricky as it was before. We take the needle tip of the needle we're going to be working on. Again, I'm holding the purple yarn in my left hand and the um, green yarn, I'm going to be taking it in my right hand. And now, okay, so here our work is kind of spread apart like this. Our stitches all the way here and our next stitch is all the way here. And what I do is hold that stitch together. I'm inserting my needle and then, so here I don't have a lot of maneuvering space. Uh, so I'm kind of hooking my index finger back so that I can get it through the loop easier. Okay, and now I'm, I'm still holding the back stitch, uh, the back needle. And I want to get my green yarn for two stitches. Okay, and now it is anchored enough so that we can let this cable go. Uh, but doing this will close the gap on each side. Otherwise, you might have a ladder running up the sides. And here we are just doing the same. And if you're not comfortable using the continental technique yet, just try it with just your, your right hand first and just alternate the yarns, drop it, and then pick the other one up. Now what you can also do, if you are only used to working with your right hand, then you can pick up both yarns and put your um, Put your finger in between them. And then if you need a purple stitch, you're pushing the yarn like this. And if you need a green stitch, then you are pulling your yarn like this. So that might be a way for you. Still make sure to kind of stretch because I think I might have done this too tight. Um, I'm not used to knitting this way. So just keep an eye on that 
but also you know if you do it slightly too tight that's what a gauge swatch is also for to get used to this new technique so you can do this and coming up to the end of the round again we're going to end with one purple stitch and then I'm going to show you one final method all right the pattern is the same for this second round so we're still going to be doing two of each color And say that you are only uh, comfortable to work with continental style knitting, so you're only used to knitting with your left hand, then you can also hold both of your um, yarns in your left hand. And for that, I hook my one color in my pinky finger and the other one in my ring finger and then drape them across them both across my index finger but I keep like one what's this a knuckle in between so that I kind of separate them now a disclaimer because this is not my favorite and I'm not really good at this method but if you like continental style knitting and you're not familiar with the throwing of the right hand, then this might work for you. So you're taking one color for these stitches and the other for the green stitches. And the trouble I have with this is that I cannot tension my yarn properly. So sometimes one yarn will be really loose while the other one is really tight so i still need to practice on this myself but um uh, some people just really prefer this so that's why i'm showing you as an option and if you don't know which one you like yet just try all of them and see which one is easiest for you and we're going to be continuing the same color work pattern until round 11 of the chart. Um, so by then you will have eight rounds of this color work pattern. And then we'll do one round plain in the background color before moving on to the next color work segment. All right, so I've completed up until round 11 of the chart which means that we have done um, eight rounds of this color work uh, which is just a simple two by two color pattern and I've moved up my stitch marker uh, to kind of this spot it was hanging here before uh, so I've just moved it up here so I can see it better so this is the start of my round you don't have to do this um, but um, I find it helpful. So now if you look at the chart, uh, round 12 is just entirely one color and it is color B. So for me that is this light purple color which is Taipei and we're just going to knit all around with color B and make sure again that you're using the needle tips of the same circular needle um, which is also sometimes called uh, needle lo loyalty so the one needle will always knit on itself so it's loyal to itself so <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird but um, I find that this helps me remember so I'll just complete this round and then come back for round 13. I've just completed round 
12 and I'm now ready to start round 13 and if you look at the next segment you see kind of like a waving pattern um, and we start at the bottom of the wave with two consecutive stitches in color F and uh, six stitches in color B but those two stitches in color um, F they only uh, show up at the seventh and eighth stitch of this um, round so only about here um, and because our yarn for color B is all the way here we are going to want to wrap that float and a float is the unused yarn in the back of your work so here you have floats of color um, B and here you have floats of color F and you see that these floats are very short um, but if we want to go all the way across to here this float is pretty long and also um, because it's still kind of on the back of our work it might cause you know it, it might cause a kind of a pucker in the fabric so we want to wrap or trap that float uh, so that it doesn't pucker the fabric and I usually tend to wrap my floats once I have seven consecutive stitches of one color or more so then I wrap the other color I'm and I'm aware that this might be abracadabra <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of knitters so let's just uh, get into it so the pattern color I'm holding it in my left hand um, and I'm just holding it in place and now I'm going to knit the first stitch with the background color which is color B and let's see so usually I would wrap my float somewhere in the middle between the the space where the float is coming from and the space where the float is going to so um, that's in about here let's see one two three four five six seven so here so let's wrap on the third stitch so I'm going to knit the second stitch as normal and now I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap and I'm holding the to be wrapped color or yarn in my left hand because I find that way easier than the other way around. So I'm holding it in my left hand. I am inserting into the next stitch. I'm taking my yarn, but I'm not going to knit the stitch yet. I am going to move my to be wrapped yarn cross the needle like this um, and you can do that by you know making the movement with your hand or by using your right hand and going just behind the yarn like this See, it's it's the same whether you wrap it with your left hand or you move the needle behind it with your right hand uh, you're now going to um, just wrap the yarn around for a knit stitch like that and as you pull this yarn through this this yarn will automatically drop off so we're just going to pull yarn B through and that leaves yarn F wrapped right there and now to complete the wrap we knit one more stitch as normal so I'm just leaving color um, color F behind my work I could even drop it completely and just knit the next stitch as normal and what that does is that the yarn is now wrapped in two places it is wrapped here that is with the first stitch and here with the second one and if I just pull here you 
see the here is the wrapped float and okay let's take the needles back into my hands okay so um, and to finish off a float like this um, because it's kind of in the corner I kind of hook my finger in the corner and get a little tug and then I take uh, my yarns back into my hands and just continue knitting so I am knitting three more stitches no wait um, yes three more before uh, we start using our color B uh, our color F so we are good to go to knit the next two stitches with color F like that and now we have six stitches coming up with color B and usually if uh, if I have six or less stitches of a color I tend to not wrap the other one so I, I tend to just knit the next one like this but do just tug on your work as I showed you before so that this float is nice and relaxed see it is not tight or anything it is nice and relaxed um, and your first stitch might seem a little bit bigger you know because it can uh, grow larger and you know pull yarn from that float but uh, usually once you block things things will even out and your stitches will be nice and even if you don't like to have a float this big you can uh, or this long you can wrap your uh, float here so um, we have six stitches in between so the middle two stitches are stitches three and four so on the third stitch we would bring the yarn over the needle and um, complete the stitch and then on the fourth stitch we would knit as normally and then we have the yarn wrapped so you can do that be sure that you're not tugging too hard on your yarn because you know when when you leave your floats too short uh, it can pucker up your fabric and you will see that even after blocking so that is really important not to do but also don't go overboard um, creating very loose floats because you will see that too so it's a balance and it's something that will definitely improve once uh, once your attention uh, improves as well so let's take a look so here I have one unwrapped float and here as well and here I have a float that is wrapped and for beginner color work knitters I would definitely recommend to wrap your floats um, I did that too when I was starting out uh, with color work and uh, as you get more confident in your color work uh, you can leave the floats longer and longer also because you just get a little bit more experience with how your uh, color work fabric behaves uh, especially if you're knitting with the same yarn again and again like I am because I love Scapies Metropolis um, so yeah that that just comes with experience and if you want to look at the chart, you see that this color work segment has two waves, if you will. And if you see that in the first and fourth round of a wave, you have six color B stitches um, after each other. So just like the row we just knit. And I would like you to practice wrapping your floats uh, for those rounds so that will be round 13 and round 16 in round 14 and 15 you don't need to wrap floats because um, you have a maximum of four stitches of color B so there's no need to wrap floats and then for the second wave um, 
for rounds 17 and 20, I want to challenge you to practice not wrapping your floats and see how that feels. And you know, this is a gauge swatch, so so you can afford to um, mess up here. So this is a very safe uh, space to try all of that. Coming up to the end of round 13 here, I am going to be wrapping my float here because we are ending with, uh, what is it, seven, seven stitches of color B. And the next round is also going to be starting with seven stitches of color B. So and I'm going to be wrapping it on the um, second to last. Is this second to last or first to last? Anyway, when you have two stitches left, wrap it on the first one. And this time I'm going to be moving my needle behind the yarn, wrapping it, and then pulling the yarn through. And now my float is wrapped there. And I'm going to be turning my work. And now on the other side, I'm going to be wrapping it again on the third stitch and and closing it on the fourth knit seven stitches and then two in color f and if you're knitting with both yarns in one hand um, then it's actually easier to wrap floats that way um, then you just reach under see because um, okay the color F is on my left here and color B is on my right. And you see that color B is going above color F. And now for the next stitch, if I just grab color B, then this one is not wrapped. But if I grab color B from underneath, like this, then I am wrapping. And now I take it from the top again. See, now it is wrapped in two places. I'm, I'm terrible <laughs> uh, maintaining my tension uh, when I uh, knit with this method though, so it's not the method for me, but it is much easier to wrap your floats here. And if you're uh, knitting with both yarns in your right hand, Okay, we're wrapping on the third stitch. Um, so now I'm wrapping the yarn that I want to be wrapped. Then wrap with your color B, but you go in the wrong direction. So from right to left over the needle. Then you take off um, color B and complete the stitch. And then you knit the next one. And then you see that the yarn is wrapped here. And this will result in your uh, knit stitch being twisted, so do make sure to untwist this on the next round. Okay, for round 14, um, this is a much easier round because we don't need uh, to wrap our floats. I did wrap the float at the end of uh, round 13. So it's at the beginning here. The first stitch is always in the background color. And now the second stitch of round 14 is already color F. Now we need to do four stitches of color B. One stitch of color F two stitches of color B, one of color F, and 
this might be a pattern that is not very easy to memorize, but it is very easy to um, visualize because uh, on each side of the two stitches of color F, you're going to do one stitch of color F. If you look at the chart, you see that this is the bottom dip of the wave. And we are just knitting two stitches of color F. I mean, one stitch on each side um, so that it can curve upwards. So sometimes I memorize the pattern by counting the stitches and sometimes um, it's just easy to see where the next layer of stitches should go. You can complete the chart rows um, from here until round 20. And make sure to challenge yourself uh, for not wrapping floats on the second wave. Uh, so that's on round 17 and 20. And then I'll meet you back for round 21. All right, so I have knit up until um, round 20 of our chart. So I've just finished the second wave. And now we are going to do a different color work pattern. Um, and the first round is going to be the same as the one for the waves. If you look at the chart, you see horizontal oval shapes um, and the first round, so round 21, is going to be the same as round 17 and 13. So we are going to need to wrap yarn F because the first stitch in yarn F is going to be um, a couple stitches away. So I'm going to be wrapping yarn F on the third um, stitch and another way of kind of moving your yarn over the needle. So uh, I showed you two ways before. One is to move your yarn over the needle like this. One is to move your needle behind the yarn like this. So that, that kind of depends which hand is more dominant for you. You can also um, just move your yarn to the front of you where it kind of just bend your finger down like this um, and then bend it up again when you finish the stitch. That is actually what I tend to do um, and this motion I do that for continental style purling so um, and I know there are a lot of ways to purl continental style but I just thought I would show you um, since it is easier for me. So I'm just going to knit up until the eighth stitch and then we do two stitches in color F and we are going to complete this first round and then I'm going to tell you what I find so interesting about this next bit of the chart. Okay, so we're at the beginning of round 22 now. And when you look at the chart, you might um, think at first like, oh, this looks kind of complicated. Uh, but I'm going to give you a piece of advice to kind of simplify charts for you. So I'm just going to knit the first couple of stitches until we get to the repeat. So um let's see that is the first background stitch then we have one stitch in color f and then for me the repeat starts here and if you look at the chart um you'll see that we have four stitches in color b and then four stitches in color f and that just repeats across the round so four of color B, 4 of color F, 4B, 4F, 4B, 4F. So um, 
if you look at the pattern in terms of, okay, I need to be doing uh, four stitches on top of the um, two color F stitches here, and then I, uh, I need to be doing uh, four stitches of color B in between those four stitches, then, you know, if you think about it like that, it can get it can get really complicated but once it clicks that is just four of the one color and then four of the other color things can get super simple right away and if you will look with me at um, round 23 of the chart, you will see that it is the same. Well, not four stitches of each color, but two. So, uh, so we start off with just one kind of edge uh, stitch, and then it's two stitches of color F, two stitches in color B, two of color F, two of color B, and so on and so forth. So, um, and lots of charts in the actual uh, cushion cover patterns are going to be like this as well. You're, you're going to have some charts that uh, look complicated at first, but if you look at them round by round, you'll see that, hey, this is just um, two stitches of the one color and then two stitches of the other color and then just repeat. Um, so that is kind of the, um, the reason behind um, me including this chart in the gauge swatch. And as we work through the, um, the pillows week by week, uh, I'm going to be writing blog posts for each week and wherever I remember, um, I will put in which charts have um, kind of a easy repeat like this because I know that it sure helped me. And sometimes you don't even realize that there is a simple repeat until you're like halfway done with the round. One last thing I would like to show you is how to put in a lifeline, um, which is basically putting in a strand of yarn that you can unravel to if you make a mistake. Um, because unraveling color work Mm, it's not that straightforward as unraveling um, simple stock net. To put in a little lifeline, you need some smooth yarn. I tend to use Scapia Scotona because it's nice and smooth and it doesn't catch on your stitches. And you need a uh, darning needle. And if you have a blunt needle, that would be even better. And you just go through all of the stitches. So I'm actually going to have my stitches on the cable instead of on the needle tip because the cable is thinner so I have some more room for my needle to go through. And you just go through all of the stitches with the scrap yarn. There, that's one side. Turning to the other side, I'm going underneath the needles. And it's handy to put in a lifeline when you look at the chart and you think, wow, that's, that's a difficult bit coming up in the next couple rows. Um, and it's just handy to do it every once in a while, maybe between each pattern part, um, so you can easily rip back. And as soon as you put in a new lifeline, you can take out the older one. There, that's all of the stitches. 
Now you just cut your yarn. Be sure to still leave quite a bit of length and I like to put in a knot so that the yarn doesn't um, slide out of the stitches. So now you have your lifeline and the only thing you have to take into account on the next round is to not knit into the lifeline. Just knit into the stitches. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So just pretending as if the lifeline isn't there at all. So it will look a little bit weird. But um, yeah, just make sure you don't knit into it. And now you will have all of the information you need to finish the chart. So please knit up until round 44 and then we'll cast off together. Okay, I have completed up until row 43 of the chart and I have already cut yarn um, F because the color work section is over and we'll only be knitting with color B now. So I'm just completing one additional round of uh, stockinette before casting off. And for the actual pillow, we will be doing this with a smaller needle size, which is why you see in the material list that we have a 2.5 millimeter needle in there. But for the chart, it really is not necessary. So I am just going to be doing this section on the same needle size, which is three millimeter for me to get gauge. Please note it might be different needle size for you. So to cast off, um, we are just going to work as if we've done before. So uh, on the front needle, we're going to work with both needle tips of that front needle. And uh, we are going to do the simplest cast off. And for the pillow, you will want to do this quite tightly. Um, simply because that will look nicer for um, the zipper. Otherwise, if you cast off loosely, the zipper will be kind of waving and that won't look very nice. So um, you can just try out because it doesn't really matter as much for the swatch yet. So we just knit the first stitch. Um, we actually knit the first two stitches as we usually would. And then now you lift the rightmost stitch over the left stitch. And I'm going to show you the continental way first. I uh, bring my left needle tip, insert it into the first stitch and lift it like this. Oops. Like this over the left stitch. And now let's show you throwing style. So knit an additional stitch so you have two stitches on your right hand needle again. And then I usually put my index finger on here, insert with my left needle tip, and I keep my index finger on here so that the stitch doesn't slide off. And I pull this stitch over and then I'll just let go. Um, and try Try doing this not as tightly as possible because you don't want the fabric to pucker, but um, just try to do it rather tightly. I'm going to insert a picture on the screen. For the actual pillow, you'll want it to look a little bit like this. Um, and if before you cast off, if you don't know whether whether you'll cast off tightly enough or maybe too tightly, then uh, just put another lifeline in the stitches before casting off because undoing cast offs um, is quite tedious. So, so if you think you might have to redo the cast off, then just put in a lifeline so you can easily undo that. Um, and then just cast off all of your stitches. And then when you've come to the end of the first side, so when you have just one stitch left on your needle, 
um, put the second needle back in your work and just for now put the stitch on there so you can put the first needle away then take the second needle tip of that needle and just take off that first stitch because this stitch is already knit um, and then you can just continue so we knit the first stitch of the second side and cast off okay so I have cast off all stitches I have one stitch left on this needle and I'm just going to pull that really large I'm going to put my needle aside cut the yarn and then pull it through and now I can also take out my lifeline and you just pull on one end and there we go and you see that where you put in the lifeline you see that it looks a bit a little bit odd there but that will even out with blocking and just a tip for measuring your gauge so take your measuring tape and I always like to put it in the middle of the swatch and take two pins or two needles and I align the beginning of the measuring tape with one uh, with a column of knit stitches and then so I know to count from there and then I put in the second needle at the 10 centimeter mark and now I can just count the stitches in between the needles uh, because sometimes if you're counting alongside the tape measure it will kind of shift into place and now you don't have to worry about that you can just count between the needles Thank you so much for knitting this practice project together with me and I look forward to seeing your progress during the Sassenach Knit Along. Be sure to share the photos in the Escape Use Facebook groups and on Instagram with the hashtags. Happy knitting! Thank you.